Hey there friends and enemies, Joper here again and today I want to go over the Goddess's Vow puzzle in Remnant 2 because it has some very interesting rewards but also you have to make an important decision that will not only affect what items you can obtain requiring multiple playthroughs of this adventure but also can affect the storyline of this location as well. So bearing that all in mind, there will be some spoilers that I'll talk about at the end but I won't show any video of for now, I'm just going to jump into the puzzle itself, which is not overly challenging in my opinion. You're going to proceed through the Goddess's Vow location and find yourself in front of a stone pillar with a blue orb in the center. You're going to activate this pillar, continue on through the location, and find four more of these pillars. They are not overly difficult to find aside from the last one, which requires you to go through a waterfall into a cave to find the final pillar. There will be enemies throughout, but they're not overly difficult depending on what difficulty level you actually are taking this adventure on in. But overall, continue on, definitely do some exploration, try to find everything you possibly can, and then you'll find yourself back at the Goddess's Temple, which had been previously locked. A mural will fall, revealing the inner chamber. This will show you a altar with a golden plate on it, as well as a statue behind that that has an item at its base. That purple item will be the Bloodless Crown, which is an interesting helmet that definitely looks cool, but isn't the most important gameplay item to find at this location. So grab that first, and then you're going to go back to the golden plate. Now, this plate has two different options for you to choose. Firstly, you can decide not to put anything in it. This is likely the choice that most players will make their first time through. And then when you decide not to put anything in it, you are going to be attacked by the Bloodless Air, which is a pan aberration that will drop two different items. The first being the Bloodless King's Vow, which is a ring where you gain 4% of base range damage dealt as lifesteal. The second is a mutator called Searing Wounds. This says increases range damage to this weapon by 1% to burning targets. At level 10, this weapon's range weak spot and range critical hits apply burning, dealing 50 fire damage over 5 seconds. But there is a second option with this bowl or plate where you can actually put an item in it that will give you a different reward and completely change the campaign. So I'm going to talk a little bit about spoilers here. Just keep in mind if this is the decision you decide to go with. You are going to actually put in the bowl the Cherished Fracture. This is the item you can give to Ledusa at the end of the campaign when you're getting ready to fight her. But instead, if you put it in the bowl, she will appear. You won't fight her at all. She will just go through some dialogue that, again, I'm not going to spoil it at all. But you need the Cherished Fracture before you approach the bowl. Put it in the item in the bowl, and you're gonna get the blossoming core crafting material. And this is essentially going to end your adventure as well. But the blossoming core crafting material will then give you the Mirage Melee weapon, which is definitely a weapon that you want to be chasing because it is a ton of fun. Decent damage, but it has the mod Cyclone. Maintaining an overhead charge melee forms 5 meter Cyclone, dealing 88 damage per second and pulls enemies towards the wheeler. Each Cyclone hit applies Exposed for 3 seconds. This could be very nice with an Exposed build, because Exposed means the target receives 15% additional damage from all sources. You can also get rings and amulets that also affect exposed enemies as well. So this is definitely one that I would recommend chasing, but probably on your second playthrough of this adventure just because of how it changes the overall storyline and then you won't get what is my favorite weapon in the game from beating Ledusa at the end. So I made a video on that already. 
definitely go chase down the monolith if you don't already have it. But after you've completed the adventure once, this is the second option you're going to want to take, in my opinion, and it is very nice. Definitely recommend chasing this melee weapon down. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more Remnant 2 content from me, definitely subscribe to the channel. It helps you out tremendously. Shows you want to see more of this type of content in the future. My name is Jopa. Have a good one. I'll catch you all later. Today, we fight.